You're progressing nicely through a Windows feature update. Then disaster strikes and all your work is undone. Why does this happen? In this video, we'll refresh the drivers other updaters cannot reach. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will update the driver files on our Windows PC. During the course of our series updating Windows 10 versions, we identified two key rules to prevent update failure. The first is to update with as few peripherals attached to the machine as possible, even disconnecting keyboard and mouse when not required. And the second is to update every system driver. Regrettably, Windows Update alone is insufficient for this task, and we therefore turn to Driver Booster 6, a free utility found at the link shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. There's plenty to clear from the home page, and we accept cookies and remove the advert before clicking free download. Our download begins, and once concluded, is helpfully highlighted. We click to run, and select yes where challenged by user account control. We note that installation language options are available via the drop down in the upper right, and we resist the temptation to click on the large eye catching install button, preferring in this instance, as always, to perform a custom install, to ensure that the installation is performed as we would like it, and without bundled bloatware. From the installation options screen, novice users could happily select the default options, although we click browse to select a custom installation path. With our custom installation path determined, we deselect the default option to create a desktop icon, as we don't use it, and it'll compromise the clean look of our desktop. We then click install, only to be presented with an option to install bundled software, in this case Opera, although note that any product could be offered here. Whilst we have no objection to Opera, and featured it in a browser tutorial last year, we strongly object to bundling unwanted software, and we therefore click no thanks before clicking next. The software installation begins, and before completion, we are targeted for further marketing with the offer of a rather feeble ebook free gift in exchange for our email address. We again decline with straightforward privacy concerns, and this is a second strike for the product before installation has even completed. With the installation finally complete, we click Scan Now to scan our system for outdated drivers, which actually doesn't commence the scan. For that, we further need to click the large scan button. With that, our scan is in progress. Upon completion, we see that the vast majority of our drivers, 24 of them, are up to date, although the observant among you will spot that this is a virtual machine, and our physical PC will have more drivers, and require more updates. We are therefore fortunate that we only need to perform a single update in this example. The large upgrade button again links to the paid version, and can easily be avoided. We therefore click to update our single outdated driver. Incidentally, where possible, we'd recommend updating drivers one at a time in any event, in order to diagnose problematic updates should the system become unstable. Performing multiple simultaneous updates makes it more difficult to identify problems. The program helpfully advises as to issues which we may encounter during updating, and we have the option to never be shown this information again. We click OK to proceed. On first run, we are notified that the system restore is not enabled, and given the option to enable it by clicking OK. We strongly recommend doing so in order to have a valid system restore point should the driver update destabilise the system. We've covered system restore in part 3 of our installing Windows tutorial series, and we've covered full system backup in our Macrium Reflect tutorial, both of which are linked in the description. Our driver installation proceeds, with progress indicated at the top of the screen. Following the installation, we are advised that there are more updates found, which will require the Pro Edition to upgrade, and unfortunately, this is yet another advert. Instead of clicking upgrade now, we simply click to close. A significant proportion of the updates will require a reboot to take effect, and having ensured that all the data on our system has been saved, and all apps closed, we select the option to reboot. The system queries our intention, and we confirm. Our system restarts, and we are returned to the desktop. In the event that our system is not performing as intended, we can perform a system restore to return it to its previous known working state. At a future time of our choosing, we can rerun the app from its icon, and click to scan. The scan then progresses, and in this instance our drivers are still up to date. We've seen that Driver Booster can find drivers which Windows Update does not, and can potentially cure a stuck Windows feature update. But we've also seen its downside, with unwanted software bundling, advertisements for paid versions, and a blurring of the line between user interface and advertisement. 
This is furthered by pop-ups which occasionally interject on the desktop. Taken in the round, we tend to install Driver Booster purely to perform a one-off driver update, then immediately uninstall. Uninstalling is very straightforward. At the start menu, we right click the Driver Booster icon and select Uninstall, which takes us to the Programs and Features dialog, where we double click the entry for Driver Booster. We again click Yes at the User Account Control prompt, and we opt not to delete any of the stored data, following the recommendations given by the uninstaller. The application is then uninstalled, and we're notified upon successful removal. Note that any drivers updated will not be affected, and remain installed on the system. If our previous attempts to perform a feature update have been unsuccessful, updating drivers in this manner may lead to success at the next attempt. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.